The Industrial Revolution brought about huge changes to the way wars were fought in the 1800s. The wars of old, muskets, cannon, line infantry in brightly coloured uniforms and cavalry charges were replaced by rifles and artillery with increased range, accuracy and firepower. Battles became messier, larger and much harder for commanders to control. The result was an increasingly defensive form of warfare. Armies would dig in to entrench positions, place obstacles such as barbed wire and mines to stop the enemy from attacking and let the artillery and machine guns do the work. By 1914, this new form of warfare, trench warfare, had become the standard. And overcoming it was no easy feat. This lesson, you're going to look at some of the ways World War I commanders sought to gain the upper hand and break the stalemate. New weapons were put to use, seeking the advantage in combat that would allow armies to break through the enemy trenches. New technology was developed, bringing a whole new dimension to warfare. And new tactics were also tried, looking to manipulate the brutality of war into a winning formula. This lesson, you are military experts. Your task is to put forward a proposal as to which of the new weapons, new technologies and new tactics you think the British Army should employ in order to break the stalemate and win the war. Pay close attention as I outline your options. Part 1. New Weapons Gas Poisonous gas proved its worth as a weapon of terror in World War I, particularly effective at temporarily subduing the enemy lines. Fear, claustrophobia and the awful death of those who did not equip their gas masks quickly enough caused men to panic. Chlorine gas suffocated the lungs and left the victim gasping for air, whilst mustard gas rotted the body, blistering the skin and shrinking the flesh. The use of gas in World War I would become an iconic symbol of its horror. Rifles. Mass-produced rifles were given to all soldiers on both sides of the war. Rifles were lightweight, so could be carried easily and were accurate up to 600 metres. A 40 centimetre knife, called a bayonet, could be fitted to one end in case a soldier's bullets ran out. Highly trained soldiers could fire between 15 and 20 bullets per minute, making rifles a much more effective and deadly weapon than the muskets of old. Machine guns. Invented in 1862, early machine guns were heavy, requiring 8 to 10 men to operate. But as they developed into portable, lethal weapons, they became used effectively across the war. According to British estimates, machine guns caused about 40% of all wounds inflicted on British troops during the whole of World War I. These intense, rapid-firing guns were a mainstay of the trenches. Flamethrowers. Far less widespread was the flamethrower. Designed to clear out small spaces like dugouts and trenches, they caused panic in the nearby area, burning its victims alive and forcing defenders to flee from their positions. However, they were dangerous bits of kit to carry. A canister of flammable oil was strapped to the wearer's back, so defending soldiers would try and shoot the canister of oil before the person got close, sending the operator of the weapon up in flames. Hand grenades. Grenades were small, handheld bombs that could be thrown about 40 meters by hand or by rifle into enemy trenches. They exploded a few seconds after being thrown, and the outer case would shatter into razor sharp fragments, causing horrific injuries to those in the immediate vicinity. By 1917, most infantry on both sides carried grenades, their use being common in trench raids and assaults. Even if they did not kill their target, they would often wound or disorientate. Artillery. These large, heavy guns could shoot shells over extremely long distances. Both sides had artillery groups at a safe distance from the front line and would fire shell after shell at the enemy. It was common to bombard enemy trenches for several hours before an attack in the hope that you might kill its soldiers, shatter the defences or leave them disorientated and broken. In 1915, 400,000 shells were being fired every month on the Western Front. The relentless noise made men's ears bleed and damaged their brains, leaving many with shell shock. Part 2. New Technology Tanks. One of the new World War I technologies that would have the biggest impact on warfare was the development of the tank. Although early tanks were slow, unreliable and poorly designed, they had potential and were soon developed into effective fighting machines. They were used to pave a way through rough terrain, crush barbed wire, break through obstacles or cross trenches. They caused panic and terror on the battlefield, with larger tanks being equipped with both heavy and light guns. 
towards the end of the war, tanks and tank tactics developed and the technology became an integral part of British and French combat. Aircraft From tethered observation balloons used for reconnaissance to large zeppelins used for strategic bombing raids over Britain, the air power of World War I opened a whole new dimension of warfare. It was in the development of the aeroplane, however, that war was changed forever. When the war began, the planes were slow, clumsy and unreliable. They were used for reconnaissance and aerial photography, helpful for mapping out the enemy trenches. Before long, fighter planes armed with machine guns were developed. Soon came bombers, designed to fly over the enemy and destroy their positions from the air. In these ways, aircraft could directly support infantry attacks and could wreak havoc behind enemy lines. World War I signified the start of a technological arms race to design and build the best combat aircraft. Their use would become widespread in World War II. Submarines Although submersibles had been used in warfare for a number of years, it wasn't until World War I that submarines as we know them today came to be developed. In this, the German Navy led the way. The Unterseeboots, or U-boats, could fire self-propelled torpedoes at enemy ships whilst underwater. They were difficult to detect and hard to defend against, though they had poor range and could not stay underwater for long. Throughout World War I, the German U-boat campaign sought to destroy trade routes used by the British, French and Americans, hoping to starve them at home and cut off their supplies. Over the course of the war, German U-boats sunk over 5,000 merchant ships and over 100 warships. The Germans would go on and prove this tactic to become a major threat in World War II. Steel Helmets at the start of the war, most nations went into battle wearing cloth, felt or leather headgear that offered little protection. From its early development in 1915, however, steel helmets such as the Brody helmet used by the British, though heavy and uncomfortable to wear, offered good protection on a massive scale, with over 7.5 million Brody helmets being produced by Britain alone. Communications one of the key issues facing commanders in trench warfare was inadequate communications. Most soldiers were poorly trained conscripts, operating a loud, chaotic environment. Communication via runner, pigeon or telephone was lost continuously due to shell fire. So by 1918 a new technology, the radio, was being used by battlefield commanders. The equipment was bulky and expensive, but it quickly proved invaluable. Sound ranging Another novel use of electricity in warfare was sound ranging. This was a method of determining the location of enemy artillery using the sound of its guns firing. World War I saw the birth of scientific sound ranging, using strategically placed microphones and recording devices linked to a central processing unit, experts could now much more accurately identify the location and distance of enemy guns. Part 3 – New Tactics Tunnelling on the Western Front, the main objective of tunnelling was to place large quantities of explosives underneath enemy defensive positions. When they were detonated, the explosives would destroy that section of the trench from below. The infantry would then advance towards the enemy front line, hoping to take advantage of the confusion. Tunnel warfare was slow and incredibly dangerous, with miners listening out for enemy tunnels coming the other way. At Messin, on the 7th of June 1917, the British simultaneously detonated 19. It was so loud that it could be heard across the channel in London. Stormtroopers A tactic first used by the Germans to try and break enemy lines were the stormtroopers. These were better equipped and better trained men attacking in smaller, faster groups instead of having masses of troops marched in lines. The stormtroopers often used flamethrowers and machine guns to assist them. They would take the enemy by surprise, bypass strong points and attack the weakest part of an enemy's line directly. The new tactic would become commonplace across the war. The Creeping Barrage At the start of the war, the basic artillery tactic was to fire lots of shells at the enemy trenches, then stop before your own infantry started charging. However, the Germans had built strong concrete bunkers that could withstand artillery attacks. They would simply wait for the barrage to end, reappear, man the guns and mow down the approaching infantry. So the British came up with a new tactic, the Creeping Barrage, at the Battle of the Somme. The creeping barrage moved forward at a pre-arranged pace. In theory, this meant a bombardment could start as soon as your infantry left your own trenches and finish just as they arrived at the enemy trench, taking them by surprise. However, it was difficult to get right. Either the barrage could move too quickly and the infantry left exposed, or, far worse, move too slowly and start hitting their own troops. Combined Arms 
What would become the fundamental principle of modern warfare as we know it, combined arms involved using infantry, armoured vehicles, artillery and aerial attacks all together to overpower the enemy. The new tank and aircraft technologies opened the way for warfare to become multidimensional. By combining air, vehicle and foot, the British discovered a strategy that could break the deadlock, providing communications and training were good.